so let's talk baby number two. OMG, I know a lot of you have been waiting. The other time, it was like a few weeks ago, I told you guys I was on my way to take a pregnancy test. Well, I did take the test and I have that result for you today. Baby number two sounds so crazy to me, but it's something that we want. It's some, some people who have one child and decide, okay, that's enough, but I think we want more than one. We want two, three. Uh, we want as much as God will give us, but I think that hopefully you know we'll probably stop at three i don't know yet you know but we are trusting god for everything well i did take that pregnancy test a few weeks back we were hoping for it to be positive but that result came out negative but like i said earlier in all in all we trust god we know that in god's timing he'll make everything beautiful you guys know i've dealt with fibroids for a long time i dealt with fibroids when i was pregnant with my first child and i am still dealing with it um, when i had my baby with transparency purposes i had two of them removed and i still have a few more to get taken out of me so i can be free and so when you have fibroids for those of you who do not know fibroids are non-cancerous tumors and you can get them on your ovaries you can get them anywhere in your womb and it's very high when it comes to black women and unfortunately i happen to have them and it's something that i am dealing with every single day my stomach looks bloated all the time i look like i'm pregnant but i'm not my stomach looks bulged out and so when i was pregnant with proverbs my first child what happened is that my stomach looked bigger than most people and so anywhere i went people would be like are you having twins are you having triplets i'm like no it's just one baby they're like wow your stomach is big for one baby and you know but i would this because i was dealing with the fibroids and that's why it's so important not to speak on women's body because you don't know what they are dealing with you know so when people would say things like oh man your stomach is really butch are you having twins i'm like um no don't speak <laughs> on my body but you can see it anyway yeah. Um, but yeah, that's something that I dealt with throughout the pregnancy. Fast forward, by the grace of God, I was able to carry her full term, um, beautiful baby, very healthy. And I was so grateful to God for that because the pregnancy journey was not easy. On top of the fibroids, I was dealing with Braston Hicks every single month. Uh, as soon as a new month hit, I was like, oh man, there, here comes the Braston Hicks. Every single new month throughout my first pregnancy, I was like, here comes the Braston Hicks. So it was not an easy journey. So when I, once I had her, I was like, man, Will I be able to have a second child? The doctor was like, yeah, everything is fine. You will be able to carry. It's up to you if you want to have the fibroids removed now or you want to wait until you have your second child. It's up to you. I'm like, man, the first pregnancy was so high risk that I do not want to put another child into that because she had to push constantly fighting with the fibroids to find a room for herself. Yeah. And my daughter has been a fighter from the day she was born. Like from the day I conceived her, she's been a fighter. She's been incredible but she's so strong and bold you know having to deal with these fibroids in my womb and having to find room for herself so the pregnancy was high risk so i didn't want to put another child through that like i said yeah and on top of that we've also decided to do it because my wife just wants to be comfortable yeah she's very uncomfortable a lot of the time <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's just time for her to be free so yeah. we're both excited about this and we feel really good about it it's the right time Mm -hmm. and it's going to put us in position for baby number two. Exactly, so I'm going to have these five breasts removed. I don't quite have all the dates figured out yet as to when I get it done. Uh, things like that, normally you, you should keep it private until you get it done. But these five breasts are really frustrating. What happens is that they bulge out. Like if you eat a little bit, you drink a little bit, they stand up, <laughs> like it's crazy. It's like they have a mind of their own. Anything you do is just like, Here's yeah. the fibroids. Here's the fibroids. Very uncomfortable sometimes. Uh, even walking around, laying down, you feel them moving around, doing their own thing. It's really, really frustrating. So I'm really looking forward to have them removed. I'm looking forward to being free. I'm looking forward to baby number two, like Ted said. And I know, I know for sure with my doctor's advice and the guidance, you know, of my spiritual leaders, I know that once i have this removed by the grace of god another child will come and you know that pregnancy will be easier um because the first one wasn't easy and i know that we kept it very private so you guys didn't know a lot about our journey we shared videos after the baby came in right so forth and so on but um the pregnancy was not easy the journey from the day i found that i was pregnant first of all when i found out i was pregnant my leg was broken <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, crazy. I'm telling she you. She thought she had broken her leg or sprained her. Yeah. It was your knee. It was my knee. Yeah. My knee was so painful. It, like everything that could go wrong was going wrong. Pregnancy is not easy. And so when I found out I was pregnant, my knee was hurting. So painful. I didn't know what it was. And apparently it had to do with the pregnancy. And some people, when they are pregnant, they will they, their face swells up. Some will have pain in their legs, some will have pain in their arms, and might happen to be my knee. And so I dealt with the knee pain for a while. And once that went away, you know, I the baby was growing and I had to start dealing with okay my baby now trying to make room for herself on top of the fibroids yeah. also trying to make room for themselves you know and so right now this is where we are with baby number two trying to heal my body first heal you know my womb make sure everything is perfect everything is ready i'll heal my mind make sure my mind is right because that, that that's also important when you deal Very. with physical health and all these issues you can be mentally drained and so i'm trying to place myself in a place of perfection i should say yes perfection because when you're you, already there I, I i'm trying to be you know in a place of perfection and so then therapy comes in oh so important something we don't talk about enough because we do carry trauma and stuff like that I talk about this all the time and so once i figure that out you know what is going on up here and i'm in a place of stillness and i'm in a place of and the fibers are out of me i feel like man my entire being will be ready to have another Look child. Look out, world. Yeah. yeah. But if I was pregnant right now, I will still, you know, thank God for it. And also for Ted, it wasn't easy. Woo, man. Like, t it wasn't easy at all. And every single time I was ha I was experiencing a breast and hick, I was having an episode with these fibroids. Ted was right there by my side. You know, for fathers who are present, it's also difficult for them um for through the pregnancy it is not easy i know that we women are the ones carrying the child and our bodies is doing the work but i want to give a shout out to the men as well because ted worked i didn't do the pregnancy by myself he worked anytime i needed a snack that i was craving he would go across town and go get it i'm like honey i'm crazy i'm, cra I'm crazy <laughs> honey i'm craving this and he'll go get it honey this and he'll be there assisting me honey my legs and he'll help me lift them up honey my waist and he'll help me on it so men also go through the pregnancy i mean don't you feel like that you went through the pregnancy with me yeah i do yeah i mean every step of the way i was involved um and I, I was even doing a lot of reading mm. as uh, first time parents. Mm -hmm. And so it was just kind of like preparing myself um, yeah. for my life to change completely. Yeah. You know, and I knew it was going to change quick. So mm -hmm. we only had nine months. Yeah. And all of a sudden everything was going to be different. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was hard. Plus, of course, like what you're saying, all of the um, challenges yes. that you were going through with the fibroid and yeah. with the Brax and Hicks and yeah. everything else, it was just, yeah. But hanging on to God and trusting that things were going to be okay, and mm -hmm. and they were for sure. But we're doing our due diligence yes. so that the second time around, you know, <laughs> we don't struggle so yeah, much. Yeah, hopefully. So with all that said and done, mm -hmm. I mean, about how long do you think before? You know, maybe number two yeah i mean <laughs> maybe because after the surgery and yeah. then you'll have recovery time yeah, yeah, yeah and then maybe we'll kind of think about it a little bit more because your mom will be going home yeah my mom is leaving and you know that's a bit of bummer because you know we love having her here yeah it makes life so easy yeah it does um and also her presence is just so warm and such a blessing but good question ted <laughs> one six once, months it, from now actually six months from now is a good a good target but maybe a year because even though they say six months from now after you heal then you also have to focus on your current child make sure that you know they are hitting every single mark when it comes to their growth um we are trying to sign her up for some classes and she's already begun some of it and so we are trying to like focus on her a little bit so maybe a year i should say a year but if within the year we got pregnant hey it is what it is it is what it is god is great and i really feel too like proverbs is going to be such a good big sister yes so, oh, she yeah. will be yeah. yeah she will be a great sister i i i'm just imagining her having a sibling when we first had her i'm like oh one baby you know it's fine but they need a sibling now i understand why our parents had like two three four 
your kid needs a sibling when there's only one child because sometimes she plays and she has friends she's making friends at, in her classes and she's making friends when we go to the park and she's making friends when we go to like mommy and me stuff but they're not always there but they're not always yeah. there and so it's nice to have a sibling and so that's what we try to do like I, I, I loved my siblings I loved having my siblings around when I was growing up yeah. I felt like you know whenever my sister or my brothers were home I was like yeah it was fun for yeah. us and I never felt alone you know growing up until you know we moved out and everyone went their separate ways yeah. then i was like man life is hard yeah nice. i'm the oldest i have i have two younger sisters yeah we're still really really close to this Very, day and that's yeah. not always the case with siblings but, yeah um we're thankful that we are for yeah. sure so and i know that proverbs and her siblings are going to be just as close it's just my question is that do you think we'll have a boy or girl <laughs> we might have a boy and a girl if we have our twins next. oh yes 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 our twins that we might need help <laughs> yeah we definitely would if, if we have twins like okay transparency here you guys when we first got pregnant i was like oh it's going to be twins i want twins but let me tell you, no, I wasn't ready for twins. I was not. If we had twins, I would have been okay caring for them then, but we were not prepared for twins. When it comes to the emotional toll it takes and the strength it requires and the help, even for one child, it's not easy. So twins, I know definitely would have needed a lot of help. Yeah. Uh, but now if we have twins, I'm ready. You know why? Yeah. It's because I've, I've experienced I know how to right. be a mom. Yeah. Well, you it was know? the first time. We were just figuring time. it all yeah, out. We were figuring so, it out. So everything had to be perfect. Yeah. I mean, we took her to the emergency every time she had a runny nose. It was yes. just crazy the kind of stuff that we did. <laughs> yes. But now we've and got a lot more confidence. We have a lot more experience. Experience, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, jumping in with twins. Honestly, I feel like we're ready for that too. We are ready for twins yeah. now. If we had twins, we are good. God knows exactly what we want or, or what we need, I should say. What God, we need. Yeah. God knows what we need, you guys. And so, in the same way with everything happening in your life right now, if you are trusting Him and if your heart is in Him and your hope is in Him, I promise you that He knows where He's taking you and He's He knows what He's doing to you and for you. God gives us what we need mm -hmm. and He surely has been faithful in that regard and and we're grateful and we're growing yeah. and we're anticipating um, more babies. Uh, more babies. <laughs> The Macaulay family to be growing, to be and, growing, and, yes. and, and to meet these wonderful people that yes. um, are already in heaven with their angel wings, waiting yeah. to enter our lives. Yes, amen, <laughs> amen to that. Beautifully said, honey. Beautifully said. Bye. Well, thank you so much yeah. for joining us today. Bye bye. See you next time. See you next time.